Hello, hello everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Zachariah, the ghost. I was watching episode 14 of The Wife. Remember, we are still on season 2. And this episode was one of those episodes because we have seen a shootout. We have seen a gunfight at the taxi rank and we have seen Mkele doing everything in his power to save his wife from more simply because of it was so bad. People were dying at the taxi rank. And we also saw that Ngova got shot at the taxi rank simply because of the Majola brothers. They have realized that Kawe decided to go to the filling station and destroy their taxis and burn their taxis. So they were very angry. They wanted revenge. They wanted to do everything in their power to destroy the Zulu brothers. Let me start the episode this way. It was a confession time when we saw Zandile confessing that she is the one who plotted the bag full of coke underneath the taxi. And the episode started, you know, with a bang because we have seen Shomo and Mkele, they were sitting down, of course, talking about their unborn child, you know, because I remember when, you know, they were like even giving him, you know, nicknames because they all assumed that it's going to be a boy child since they don't have, you know, girls. Remember, their father had only boys and so far, Nova had a boy and also, you know, the big brother, the older brother, you know, Uncle Sana also have, you know, boys. So they assume that Mkele will also have, you know, a boy child because they were sitting down. Mkele was like saying, this one is going to be a middle fielder. This one, he is one of those boys who doesn't hit the pole. They score, you know. And we have seen Sambulo when he showed up and he was like saying, no, this one can be Steve Lekolea. This one is going to be Benny McCarthy. You know, it was a great moment whereby, you know, the brothers were like already praising the unborn child. And that's one thing for sure I like about the Zulu brothers, because they always make sure that they support each other, although the child is unborn, but they're already, you know, giving him that confidence of saying this one will be Benny McCarthy. We all know how great Benny, you know, was, you know, during his playing days, you know, and that's when Nkosana showed up with Zandile and he said, guys, you know, sorry for keep you waiting for that long. You know, Zandile, I want to say something to you. That's when she confessed that we didn't know that, you know, Jangu cannot drive that taxi on that day. We are the one who plotted that bag of coke underneath the taxi. You know, and we have seen that, you know, Tomo was upset. She was like saying, so Ingani, you know, so that means a child went to jail because of you. You know, and she had to make things smoother simply because of she has to tell Sambulo that, look, um, there's somebody who saw me, somebody who knows how I got out of jail, and that somebody was, you know, blackmailing me. And that's the reason why I had no choice to do this deal. And Mkhele was like saying, so you're doing deals without us. You could have come to me and tell me, you know, about the deal. Maybe I was going to help you. Samulo was also saying I was available to help. You know, and also Tromo was like saying you could have come to me and, you know, I could have done something. But now what you did is just a mess. You know, and we have seen, you know, how sorry she was because she was trying to apologize. And, you know, the older brother, Nkosana, was like saying I'm going to fix it. You know, I am sorry about what happened. I didn't know that Zandile is involved, you know, into drugs because, you know, we don't do drugs in this family. And it was just one of those situations whereby she felt stupid because she had to come and apologize to people who were way younger than her. And she had no choice. She had to apologize because she was wrong because Mkotu was arrested because of her. You know, and that scene was great because we have seen that after that, she had to go, Zandile had to go to see Mandisa and speak with Mandisa, tell Mandisa about the situation. And Mandisa was like saying, now what are you going to do with, you know, bully? And she was like saying, she is calling me all the time and I don't know what to do because I don't know what to tell her. And I liked what Mandisa told her because she was like saying, you cannot avoid her forever. You have to pick your phone calls and you have to tell her what happened. You know, the cook didn't arrive to Devon simply because of, you know, there was a roadblock. You have to be honest with her. While they were still talking, there she showed up. You know, and bully, she showed up. I, I call her bully because I think she's bully. She showed up and she was like saying, guys, where is my stuff? Because now I got calls that the stuff didn't, you know, reach the destination. You know, it was just one of those situations where she was like saying, 
if I don't get the stuff, you know, there will be blood, you know, they are going to kill us. And Mandisa was like saying, don't count me in. They are not going to kill me. They are going to kill you because it's your stuff, you know, and you can tell that she was frustrated because she trusted Zandile and the deal didn't work out the way she thought it will. She was frustrated and she didn't know what to do. And that's when Zandile was like saying, the only thing I can do is to speak with Tungosana and see if he can help us with the money. Since, you know, the, the coke is gone, that means we have to replace it with hard cash. And on the other side, we have seen one of the guys, you know, calling Nova and telling him that it is the situation is bad here, the tax rank. Don't come to the tax rank and tell all your brothers not to come here today simply because of things are so bad. You know, the Majola brothers are so angry simply because of how we decided to go to the filling station and damage their taxes and also ban their taxes. So they want revenge and they want you. You know, and, you know, he had no choice in Nova but to call all the, the, the brothers. He went actually to the house to confront, you know, Kawe about what happened. And he wanted to ask him, why did you do that? Simply because of you have caused a serious problem because now it's war and we all know war is bloody. Why did you do that? You know, and he is right by asking that because of now he is the chairman. You know, everything has to go through him. He is right in Nova by doing that because if the Zulu brothers, they just go and do things without speaking with him, you know, that undermine him simply because of other drivers are not going to respect him since he is the chairman of the taxi association. You know, I understand why he's frustrated. I understand why he was so angry because while he's busy talking to him, on the other room, we have seen that, you know, Ukutom Dala, Nkosana was busy on the phone with Ngobe, telling Ngobe that, you know what, you need to, you know, make sure that my younger brother Ngobe is out because now you're telling me that you, you got rid of, you know, the fingerprints on that taxi. Now that means my brother will come out. And, and Ngobe made it clear to Nkosana that since we have wiped the fingerprint from, you know, the taxi, that means now your brother, he is the one who should face the consequences. He is the one who should face all the charges and the case now is direct to him because there is no other person that we can blame. There is no other, you know, evidence which will come out that it is not his drugs. That means he is, you know, the one who should deal with the whole case. And now Nkosana was like saying, the reason why we pay you is because of we want you to deal with this kind of, you know, problems. And, you know, Ngobe was like saying, to be honest, this one is difficult. This one is something that I cannot do for you, you know. And Gwasana was like saying, money solve these kind of problems and I'm willing to give you. I think that must be, you know, 2.5 mil. And Ngobe was like saying, I'm not making any promises, but I can see, I will see what I can do. You know, he is the man of his wit and he can make things happen. I really like that. While Gwasana was busy on the phone with Ngobe, that's when he had the voice of Ngoba. It was very loud. Ngoba was calling Kawa's name because he wanted to confront him and ask him why did he do that? Why did he ban the taxis? Simply because of he is the taxi chairman and he feels like, you know, they should speak with him. You know, Zulu brothers shouldn't go and do things without talking to him as their older brother or as, you know, the taxi association boss. And that's when Gosana had to rush to go to the room so that he can just see what he can do. Since the brothers, they were, you know, very angry. They were both wanting to fight because Kawa was like saying the Majola brothers are the ones who started this. They are the ones who stole our taxes. And now Ngoba wanted to know how do he know that? Because he spoke with the owner of the filling station and the owner told him that the cameras were not working. And that's when Kawe revealed that the cameras were working. They deleted the footage, but he went there, you know, to, you know, restore the footage and also, you know, to download the footage. And he had the proof that it's the Majola brothers who did that. But Ngosana was like saying, you are not supposed to take, you know, that action simply because of what you did, you know, it's just war. And in the meantime, I am going to tell, you know, Mkele so that he must go and get from work from because it is not safe we have to stay low you know keep everything low until you know this whole smoke you know die down and on the other side we have seen Moba saying he's going to call Sambulo so that he must go and get you know Mandisa and also Zandile from his tavern so that they can also be safe 
And we have seen that when Sambule showed up to Mandisa's tavern, you know, he didn't want to ask too many questions. He didn't want them to, you know, give him reasons why they cannot go with him. Simply because of he said, don't ask me too many questions. I said, we are going right now. We don't have time right now. Let's go. And Mandisa wanted to ask, go where? Why? Was like saying, don't ask too many questions. And he told Zandile that don't worry about, you know, the children I already went to school, you know, to fetch them. You know, it was just one of those situations and we have seen that um, clearly on the other side he went to where Shlomo is working and when he arrived, you know, Shlomo was not there and the lady who is a best friend to Shlomo, that's when she told him that Shlomo decided to go to the taxi ring because she was craving for Inyama Yentro, you know, she was craving for, you know, head meat and... You know, he just lost it right there because he didn't know what to do because they are trying everything in their power to make sure that, you know, the Zulu brothers or anybody who is the, you know, the member of the Zulu family is not seen at the taxi ring because the Majola brothers, you know, they are unpredictable. They can do anything, you know, to send a message to the Zulu brothers. And we have seen how he kept on calling her phone and she was not answering her phone. I don't know what is wrong with this woman. She doesn't answer the phone and she knows how this guy behaves maybe this guy has to you know make peace and know that my woman she doesn't answer phone calls and i shouldn't be upset if she doesn't answer her phone because she drove straight to the text ring and when she arrived she saw this other lady who was you know selling at the text ring of course she's you know selling meat takeaway and everything and pop you know and they were great because she knows trauma and she was like saying, the way you are buying, are you buying for the whole family? She was like saying, no, I'm just buying for myself. And I also, you know, wanted to come and surprise my man or my husband. Where is he? And she was like saying, from early this morning, I didn't see him. That really shows that people are watching each and everything. You might think people are not watching you. But, you know, when we're saying the street is watching, you know, that means a lot. And she said, ever since early in the morning, she didn't see him. You know, Mkhele. And Mkhele, in the meantime, was calling Kawe so that he can track, you know, where Shomo is. He was like saying, man, Tobeta Lama, track Awako and tell me where Shomo is. And he came back to him to tell him that she is at the taxi rank. And it was just brutal because the Majola brothers, while they were busy talking, how angry they were, you know, and that's when they spotted Shomo and they said, you know what, look at the Zulu, one of their wife, you know, the Zulu wife, she's busy modeling here at the taxi rank while our taxis are all banned. You know, and it was just one of those situations whereby the other old man tried to, you know, talk sense of saying, guys, do not do this, you know, do not do this cause now. If you're doing this, that means people are going to die and they were saying the only way to get through them is to, you know, kill those they love the most. It was just one of those scenes that I sat down and looked at it and I was like saying the Majola brothers are brutal. They don't care. You know, they don't, they really don't care, man. And we saw that Mkhele showed up driving a red BMW and it's the same BMW that we saw on the trailer when they were showing us what to expect on the next three episodes. And that was just great because what Romo did once those guys started shooting, she made sure that she take cover of course, she's a journalist, she's well trained, you know, they train them when, you know, things go sideways. The first thing that you have to do is to find safety, find a place where you can hide because, you know, journalists are always, you know, at the firing line. They're always going to places whereby things are happening, where it's dangerous. Of course, safety comes first. And I'm clearly showed up and he started to retaliate, he started to fight back and to make sure that she is safe. You know, that shooting scene, hmm. It's a TV show, of course, and they have to put it that way. There were so many loopholes when you look at it, you're like, oh, you couldn't survive those bullets. You know, because those guys were not blinking. Those guys were making sure that they shoot at the target. And I'm surprised they didn't even shoot him and they didn't even shoot Chromo. But anyway, it's it's a TV show. We have to, to give that one a pass of saying, you know what, let's, let's just let it slide. You know, it's, it's a TV show. They have to make it exciting. And clearly saved her, you know, drove off with her, you know, he became the hero of the day. And after they just left, that's when, you know, Nova showed up with the security. You know, they were well armed and the Majora brothers didn't, you know, receive that one kindly because they were like saying, Nova is you here, you know, and you don't even see how armed we are. And you're showing up with these guys and you think you're going to intimidate us, you know. It was just one of those because, you know, Nova was like saying, 
he came with the bucket and he said, I told you that I need you to start doubling the money that you're paying and where is my money? You know, and that's when Guaza shot him. But I think he will survive because he shot him on this other side. It's not the side of the heart, you know, to the lung side. I think he will survive because on the next episode, that's when we saw that, you know, he went to, they took him to hospital, you know, and it looks like the operation was a success, you know, but I'm going to speak about the next episode, you know, today you know and, and that was great simply because of the majora brothers they were also celebrating and showing that we are not af afraid of the zulu brothers we are not scared of them we can shoot them and they can also bleed because you know everybody is scared of you know the zulu brothers it was a great great scene i really enjoyed that scene you know simply because of it shows that sometimes the zulu brothers when they are under attack they have to work as a team and see what they can do so that they can all be safe and I appreciate you guys showing me love and support. Episode, you know, 14 was great. You know, episode 14 was great. And I appreciate you guys showing me love and support. Thank you.